Hello everyone, um, thank you for joining us. It's uh, wonderful to have you here for this first of uh, a series of three lectures provided by Dr. Arbe. Um, I'm delighted that Dr. Arbe has uh, agreed to do this for us during this very difficult time around the world and I hope everyone is keeping well. Um, this will be a fantastic lecture um, what I would ask is you to be forgiving if there is any technical issues, as you can appreciate. We are in Japan, UK, all over, trying to get this to work effectively, but I think it will be fine. Um, if you don't know who Dr. Arbe is, Dr. Arbe is a um, professor, a, a dentist in uh, Japan. He is... Um, my mentor in removable prosthetics. I started training under him maybe seven, eight year ago now. And he, he has taught me more about removable prosthetics than anyone else. Um, he graduated in 1981 um, and developed suction dentures in 1999. Um, he's written several books, which I'm sure he'll tell you about. And I would like to offer the screen now to Dr. Arbe, give him a, a very warm welcome and thank him very, very much for his time. It's evening in Japan and I know you'll enjoy it. I'm very much looking forward to it. And the next one will be on Thursday this week. At the same time, this will be part two. So without further ado, I'd like to offer the screen to Dr. Arbe. Thank you very much. Thank you for your generous introduction, Carl. And uh, first, I'm going to give you a short comment. Uh, co uh, coronavirus infection is going around all over the world. And uh, how are you feeling? And uh, this is a tough situation, but I hope things will get better soon. And I hope you will take care of your health. So just briefly before my presentation, I'd like to thank Ivo Club and the company for inviting me to this beautiful webinar and for giving me, giving me the opportunity to be able to speak to you today entitled Suction Effective Mandibular Complete Denture Combined with Biofunctional Prosthetic System. So uh, I hope you will find my presentation to be informative. So let's begin my presentation. This is my first question to you. What other components patients have? It goes without saying that the worst denture situation is the maxillary denture that drops down immediately when the, when the patients open their mouth. This failure would be involved with the maxillary denture that is lying on the flattened tissue or flattened ridge, a flabby tissue, accompanied with advanced bone atrophy. The second worst denture is the mandibular denture that lifts up easily when the patients open their mouth. Please take a look at her mouth, the lower denture. She tried to open her mouth wider, however, she couldn't do that. Because her lower denture is lifts up. We frequently see the same problem around the world, and this video shows you how difficult it is to learn the skill to achieve mandibular suction. In order to overcome this problem, I developed suction mechanism concept and the technology in 1999. So unfortunately, Japanese publishing companies were associated with the English book sale. So my first English book was published in 2012. After that, I have I received many, many inquiries. Uh, Dr. Abe, how do you fabricate a case denture in class two or class three? So I decided to um, publish next book, second book. So Mandibular Saxon Denture, The Professional in last year, sorry. So anyway, what is suction? This is suction. As you can see, suction denture is superior than the conventional denture. We are, taught, we are all taught in the dental school. 
regarding retention. No vacuum parts, no danger adhesive, no uh, audio effects, no audible effects. It's a true story. So um, after publishing my book, English book, I started to create many, many instructors around the world. And there are now 39 clinical instructors and 90 technical instructors in the world. And I'd like to thank all of the instructors to spread out my denture technique around the world. So I'd like to introduce my um, instructors. The left, top of the top left, uh, um, Carl Fem, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Paul McNary and John Weavery and the Carl Fembick and the Chris Ingham in England and the Frank Zimmerin and the Matthew Boxhorn in the same time who work for Ivoclub Department Head Office. And in China, uh, Dr. Cho, Ma, and Dr. Sun, uh, and also um, Dr. Kwan Toeno in Korea. He's the only one in, uh, clinical instructor. And Jonathan Sen in Taiwan, and uh, Andrew and Kelvin in Singapore. And the bottom one, uh, Team Australia, Robert Matijan and David Smith, uh, Shane Chambers, uh, Peter Anastasia, and John Bachelor from New Zealand, and um, Steve McLean, and uh, uh, Hilo Uchida, and Annie Jabour. And uh, finally, uh, I'd like to introduce Canadian Team Canada, uh, Marcus Fisher, and uh, Esther, and uh, Erica Corbank, and, uh, uh, and Stephanie, uh, Stephanie, and uh, finally, Erica Kukuchika. So if you need to learn such effective mandibular denture, don't hesitate to contact them immediately. They are very kind. So there are three, uh, many different types of lecture and hands-on. The left one is a uh, uh, big conference that have a uh, seating capacity of 2,000, very huge. And on your right, um, maybe so 30 or 40 uh, participants in the small group uh, demonstration course. So I, I showed them uh, my technique with a live patient. But face-to-face, -face, the CMCD hands-on basic course is highly recommended to you. So because you can learn not only such effective mandibular denture technique, oh, clinical nice. technique, and the laboratory nice. technique. So nice. Sandra and Nancy yes, used sure. to be uh, used to be worked for Ivoclub Evident as an instructor wow. for a long time. That's incredible. And I met her, I met them uh, in, in Toronto last uh, two incredible. years ago, and uh, they decided to come to Japan to learn my dental technique. And instructor course is very severe. So uh, Carl Fembeck uh, is now uh, training at, at my office. And uh, of course, under, super, uh, under my supervision. So anyway, uh, if you need uh, more and more information and uh, if you want to improve your clinical skill with suction, please contact instructors immediately. So my webinar is separated into three, three days. Uh, on day one, today, I'd like to highlight the suction mechanism of the mandibular complete denture. And on day two, I'd like to highlight intraoral examination and I will show you or I will teach you how to fabricate well fit custom tray achieve, uh, to be able to achieve mandibular suction. Very important part. And on the day three, I will report to you. Um, so easy and a difficult case with analog and the digital technology. So first I'd like to verify uh, suction, uh, to verify, uh, verify uh, beneficial advantage of SMCD. So this patient wore a good suction denture. And I'd like to show you X-ray TV images. This is the actual record. And a patient is uh, eating hard dumpling with volume. And uh, so that uh, we can clearly see the movement of condylar, smooth movement of condylar and the beautiful mastication. And finally, we can see swallowing. Mm, nice. And the next uh, frontal view. So first, uh, unilateral, uh, unilateral occlusion is established and gradually it's changed to bilateral balanced occlusion. 
as you can see, a lower denture doesn't move enough. This patient had one age travel problem because she couldn't swallow food at once because food is left on the, the lingual part. And yeah, can you see here? So, and she swallowed um, food and with the second, it's an aging problem. So it's caused a choking or so aspiration. To make it more clear, to make it clearer, take a look at. So these are interpolation points and the two green dots are benchmarks and the movement of uh, blue dots are measured from benchmarks. And as you can see, so the lower denture movement is tightly coordinated with lower jaw movement. On the other hand, upper jaw movement is um, maybe so mainly uh, in response to uh, force, uh, the forces, reply, forces applied on it by the uh, chewing motion of lower denture. It's very important. I emphasize that uh, suction denture have a major effect to reduce the denture mobility during function. So another advantage of CMCD is uh, impression technique is doable, very, very doable impression technique. So this is a, a, a university, this is a dental school, and uh, uh, she was a young postgraduate post dentist. And uh, uh, other elder dentists actually made a fool of her because she was very young. And uh, so oh, you cannot achieve mandibular suction because suction dentistry is very difficult for everyone. But take a look at it. Very nice. And this sound changed their dental life. Dental life. Yeah, it's a game changer. And uh, Esther, Esther is uh, very now popular in Canada. And uh, she's a BPS suction and the digital instructor. Nice catch. Yeah. So the goose bump. Uh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> The goosebump feel when you can hear the popping sound. So, and one more question to you. So, uh, how do you evaluate or estimate if your impression is successful or failure? For example, if you fabricate upper denture, when you fabricate upper denture and the fat upper denture easily drops down, oh, of course it's failure, but Lower denture, how did you estimate if your impression is good or not? So uh, you, we are all taught in the dental school, comp, uh, of course, compound impression technique. And uh, <clears throat> patients wearing lower denture without implants were considered as a dental handicap in the past. So if you, once you get enough suction when taking impression, I think you can easily estimate if it your impression is very, very successful. So suction, popping sound is very important and to change your life. In truth, success rate of suction denture is approximately 87%, but not 100% because there is no 100% treatment. There is no prosthodontic treatment with 100% success. And the remaining 13%, 13% of the denture patients cannot get enough suction. And some of them need a therapeutic denture to normalize their mandibular jaw position before a final precision, a final denture fabrication. And some of them need two implants to enhance their oral function. And I hesitantly recommend commercially available denture adhesive to patients with dementia or dry mouth. It's true story. So why are the conventional dentures unable to achieve mandibular suction? These are impressions from the same patient. These are impressions taken from the same patient. And the left, left two, de two impressions, a compound impression technique. So we are all taught in the dental school. 
and uh, pro, uh, conventional impression is oriented to take mass attachment to, in order to design a denture. So target of conventional denture is mass attachments. It's very important. And the purpose of the conventional denture is uh, to achieve better muscular performance through enlargement, uh, through extensive enlargement of denture bearing zone. So denture um, must be bigger than the normal one, typical one. On the contrary, the purpose of suction denture is very different. So to seal the all to seal the all to seal the uh, entire denture border with oral mucous membrane. So the target of the suction denture is oral mucous membrane, but not muscle, because we cannot see muscle directly with our eyes into the orally. The left denture is a uh, left, left denture is uh, fabricated uh, according to the conventional type, and the right one is a suction denture. So I think you must have thought that suction denture would be larger than the conventional one, but the fact is contrary, smaller than that the conventional denture. Why is it, uh, what, what is absolutely required so for complete denture suction? My answer is crystal clear. Very simple concept, complete, seal, complete sealing of the denture border. So here is a denture here, upper denture here. So if I make a hole on the palate region with a bar, then I'm actually denture easily drops. Of course, because uh, Dr. Abe uh, made, made an uh, air leaking spot on the palate region. Yeah, sure. So a lower denture is identical. So regardless of whether um, it's a maxillary denture or mandibular denture, there is no instance where air breaks the seal. If the seal is not, is not perfect in even one place, the maxillary denture will drop down and the lower denture will lift up. It's clear even to a child. So this is the principle of suction, regardless of whether it's a maxilla or mandibular. Why is it difficult to create a suction denture in the mandible? So I think there are three reasons. First one is the smaller, man, smaller, so mandibular digi is very smaller than that of the maxilla. And the second one is the uh, tongue is located in the ma ma mandible. So tongue retracts or tongue moves up and forth and side to side. Uh, air leak spot is created around the sublingual region. So the final one, the third, um, it, it, it's not known uh, in the, um, for a long time in the past. The movable volume of mandibular mucobuccal fold is two or three times greater than that of maxilla. So I'd like to show you a precise animated movie reproduced, by, reproduced from uh, X-ray TV uh, that is created in 1975. And as you can see, upper so muk buckle fold doesn't move enough, but take a look at the lower muk buckle fold. So moving a lot rather than the uh, upper muk buckle fold. So I, I, I want to say that uh, upper den impression is very easy for a beginner, but the lower denture impression is very, very difficult for everyone because uh, muk buckle fold and lingual muk buckle fold moving a lot. This is my study with MRI. On your right, red part is the vaccinated muscle and the yellow part is the submucosal tissue. You may notice that the all of the denture border comes in contact with surface of all of the mucous membrane, but not muscle. So the main player of the denture seal is the all of the mucous membrane, but not muscle. On the contrary, uh, the main player of the muscle activity is muscle. Please separate the two things. Why do I recommend the BPS? Why did I select BPS from, from, from among many ways? Uh, honestly speaking, I have been a GC instructor, a Morita instructor for a long time because um, suction defective mandibular complete denture is uh, just a concept, but not a system. So SMCD can be applicable for all companies' products. 
So JC monitor, okay, no problem. We will get enough, we will uh, make a suction effective mandibular confidential when using any company's materials. But, 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 very important. BPS is a shortcut way to improve your suction denture skill levels. It's very important. So uh, I'd like to um, answer, I'd like to answer referencing this article. So Dr. Fenlon concluded that the most important aspect to satisfy patient is to obtain the accurate reproduction of jaw to jaw relationship. In short, bite registration is the most important factor requirement to satisfy patient. Of course, uh, it's known for a long time in the complete dental therapy, adoptive capacity of patients and the effects of a patient's personality and also patient's, I don't know, a human relationship between a patient and the dentist are on patient rating of of suction, uh, patient rating of dental satisfaction. The second required requirement was lower dental stability. So suction denture just match with the lo lo this uh, requirement. By the way, what is the best, best denture fabrication system to agree with the first requirement? I firmly believe that that is biofunctional prosthetic system from ibuprofen evident because BPS has unique three-step procedures of determining mandibular gel position. So in the first phase, primary bite record is taken using centric tray. Very nice. But this is, a, uh, this is not a precise bite record, just a, a temporary bite record or almost bite record. And uh, after, so fabrication of the custom trays, final impressions of uh, final fit after fabrication of the custom tray and the uh, impression has been, uh, impression, precision impression has been finished. Next, following precision impression, um, we needed to check if particular dimension is correct or adequate or not using a phonetic method or freeway space. So patient is now counting backward from 70 to 60. I'm sorry, Japanese language. But this method forced the patient to concentrate on uh, just counting. And the patient easily forget uh, to be observed by the operator. We always watch, watch out for uh, three millimeter space during speaking, very important. And after ch change the vertical dimension, uh, we will move on to the uh, determine of the de determine the horizontal mandibular jaw position. So Nasumera M is very nice, and also final precision suction impression will become a nice, uh, nice uh, tray, a uh, nice uh, uh, gossip catch base. Yeah, very nice. No, no moves, and very stable. And then tap, 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 and then move your jaw forward, backward, tap, tap, tap. Okay. So let's move on to the suction mechanism of the mandibular complete denture. It's a main topic. Uh, lower uh, suction mechanism is comprised of five different types of closures. A little bit complicated. So first, I'd like to talk about the uh, labial and buccal uh, lesion. So indicated by blue arrows. The exterior surface of the denture base, denture border comes in contact with lip tissue on your left side in, in, at the incisor area and the buccal mucosa uh, in the molar area. And the interior side of the denture base uh, indicated by the green arrows uh, com comes in contact with uh, lip mucosa in the, uh, in the inside of the area and the ridge mucosa in the back of the molar area. So it's a very, very strong closure like a sandwich. I named it a labial, buccal, interior, exterior double closure. Very, very strong closure. In order to enhance the dental bearing zone when fabricating custom tray, please put the thickness of the uh, buccal shelf region the buccal shelf region, so final denture as well. And if you find the, when you, um, no, if you find the, if you in, in 
in, encourage the uh, um, patient with a shallow labial vestibule, the thickness should be given to the anterior part, a labial part. So they are very famous and actor and doctors from Korea, and they have a beautiful dent here, dent. So I think uh, uh, more thickness uh, make it possible to create more beautiful condition that's similar to this. Okay, let's move on to the ceiling of the lingual area that is separated into uh, two types of suction mechanism. Prior to the detailed explanation of this, um, I'd like to show you a difficult sitting area first. When the, tongue, when the mouth opens, tongue retracts slightly, and you can see the space around, uh, area around the sublingual region and area around the little molar pad region indicated by blue uh, red arrows. So please pay attention to seal the, uh, seal the denture border at, at the two areas. Okay, mandibular lingual sealing is separated into the seal at the sublingual fold and the, the seal at the little mild hydrofossal region. So uh, the left here is the cor cl uh, cl coronal cl uh, cross section shown as line number one. So at the uh, uh, sublingual fold and on your right, bottom right, uh, uh, the cross section, uh, shown, uh, cross section shown as line number two at the little mild hydrofossa. So I'd like to highlight the seal at the sublingual fold first. Yeah. It's called lingual interior exterior double closure. So at the first sight, you have already found that uh, the uh, leech is inclined from right to left, left to right. But please focus on the sublingual spongy tissue that is located behind the anterior ridge because lingual denture border sinks down at that area. And when the sublingual fold area is rich with spongy tissue, you, you can, uh, I can, uh, you will expect uh, to achieve mandibular suction. Take a look at the blue part. When the mouth opens, Thanks to presence of the sublingual spongy tissue, the seal would not be compromised. Very stable sealing. So I, it, uh, there, is, there is no exaggeration to say that the magnitude of negative pressure uh, depends upon the amount of sublingual spongy tissue. This is a, a very beautiful, uh, complete sealing of the denture bone. So here, as you can see, there is no space at the little mar uh, at the, so uh, sublingual region. So a denture border, lingual denture border, completely engaged with the sub sublingual tissue. To the enforce the interior exterior double closure with the sublingual spongy tissue. When fabricating custom tray, the thickness should be given to the sublingual denture border, final denture as well. Very important information. Uh, keep, it, keep in mind. So here I'd like to show you precisely precision impression technique in straightforward case. This patient has a very nice reach, good reach form, and uh, a stable mandibular jaw position. And, uh, I usually um, ask the patient to make ex five exercises. Tighten the lips, sound E, and move the tongue across the upper lip to capture the tongue movement, uh, back, up, back, side of the, uh, back, back side of the tongue movement, and uh, uh, push, the back, uh, push the back side of the anterior bite wings with the tongue. Then the lingual floor raises up, lingual floor uh, becomes stiff then we can easily capture the lingual floor movement and finally swallow. So five men, movement is one cycle and ask the patient to make this, make, uh, this movement 
uh, maybe so two or three times, uh, depending on the uh, impression mat material setting time. In summer, so impression material setting time is very so shorter. So upper impression has been finished and I press it back to the mouth. Lower impression. Now we'll start. Light body impression material is applied. And I ask the patient five exercises. Ooh, ee, ooh, ee, two movements. And I hold that the tray down. And ask the uh, patient to move her tongue side to side and stick out the tongue and lock the chin and push the backside with the right wings with her tongue. And they finally swallow. So you may notice that this impression technique is a patient-centered impression technique, but not a operator manipulated impression technique. So uh, if you fabricate, when you, once you fabricate well-fit custom tray, you will, and you, 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 you will, so take a so same uh, impression in same size and in same shape. Unfortunately, we sometimes encounter the patient without sublingual spondy tissue, flat, flat sublingual spondy tissue. It's, a, it's called the tent like tissue. So if that happens, uh, we will find that uh, in, in this finding that case, uh, in my daily practices, uh, it, uh, we, want to, we want to be able to achieve mandibular suction. Because sitting area is extremely small, then when the tongue moves, the air leaking spot will be created uh, at, at the uh, sublingual, sublingual, sublingual denture border. Okay, next, can you notice another problem when taking a look at uh, this picture? Tongue retraction, tongue retraction. So in, gen in 75, percent of a dangerous patient, tongue retracts slightly within two centimeters in general. In type two, type one, uh, tongue retracts uh, more further, so maybe uh, from, um, from two centimeters to uh, four centimeters uh, from the, sorry, from the anterior ridge, and uh, further, even further in type two, very difficult case. So on your right, air leaking spot is completely created at the sublingual denture border. So uh, it's incomplete, it's ineffective, suction ineffective. Let's move on to the compensatory closure at the little mild fossa region. So indicated by the green, green arrows, yeah? So please take a look at the light, light picture. And uh, okay, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, rewind. Okay, so as you can see, the space is, space is created under a, a linear, linear data border, under the linear data border. So it's a very, so it's not the perfect closure. It's called compensatory closure that is, a, that is attained with the tongue sidewall, applying pressure toward the denture underneath. So the two to three millimeter extension of the denture border is mandatory to create the resistance wall. Light figure shows you uh, adequate extension of the resistance wall. The contrary, on your right, so denture border doesn't reach to the uh, mild hard line. So the denture easily slides away by the tongue pressure. To complete the compensatory closure at the little mild hard foster region, thickness, thick, uh, thinness, sorry, thinness should be given to the uh, little mild hard foster region. And the final denture as well. 
So be sure uh, that thickness should be given to the uh, sublingual region and the thinness should be given to the uh, literal marrow or hydrophosa region. It's very important. Please keep in mind. But uh, there are two criticisms to expand the, expand the denture border over the marrow hard line. So from anatomical uh, field and the physiologic field. So Dr. Nagel uh, reported that denture, so tray border shouldn't be, so shouldn't, should not be over expand, uh, uh, over expand beyond the uh, mild hard line, because uh, it's uh, it, it will be it's it's interrupt the muscle activity. But from the current of anatomical point of view, so anatomical analogist um, um, report that the denture border can be extended over the mild hard line because the Muscle fiber, please take a look at the, on your right. Uh, muscle fiber runs in the inferior direction at the maximum contraction. Another criticism is from physiologic field. So they insist that uh, the little monohoid of the space is a natural or an original space in the healthy dentate, but not created after becoming edentulous. So, uh, denture border shouldn't be extended over the marrow line because the natural space, natural original space will be interrupted. I think this opinion is, yeah, almost correct. Yeah, completely correct, correct. Yeah, I agree with this opinion. However, this is upper denture, once again. Do you cover, do you cover, do you cover the upper palatal region with a denture base? when you fabricate a maxillary denture? Everyone said yes, because it prevented the maxillary denture from being dislodged. Why Dr. Abe, why does do, do, do I uh, seal, do I extend the denture border over the mano hard line? I want to, I want to seal entire denture border with all of the mucous membrane. So it's considered as a necessary evil. Let's move on to the close contact closure with the, no, no, let's move on to the uh, closure, uh, no, no, suction mechanism of the uh, little more, little more apart region. So it's separated into two different types of closures, close contact closure and exterior closure over the denture base by the, uh, you have the ex ex closure over the denture base, okay? And first, I'd like to highlight cross contact closure first. So uh, the interior surface of the denture base comes in contact with the little pad tissue intimately, but it's identical to the maxillary palatal ceiling areas, maxillary, maxillary palatal ceiling. But this picture, big picture is an ideal situation. Just uh, I cut the model, just I cut the model. Yeah. So, as, so you are aware that uh, lateral parts are easily deformable, def deformable by impression pressure and the uh, mouth opening closing movement. So now uh, this is a lateral pad, and the um, lateral pad is plump and short in its closed mouth, and the mouth is opening. Lateral pad is uh, stretched out and flattened. So let me pose you a question. What should the impression of the lateral pad region be taken? In which shape or status should the lateral pad be in when taking a preliminary or precision impression? My answer is crystal clear. The target shape of the lateral pad in the preliminary impression and the precision impression stages we want is the natural shape of the lateral pad. So, Closed mouth impression technique is highly recommended for you because the negative pressure will build upon in the interior si side of the denture. That moment, the denture subside down to the alveolar ridge. So, closed mouth impression is very important. To overcome this problem, no, 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 uh, sorry. Uh, this is a frame cut back tray. Uh, it's a major effect to reduce the deformation of the retinal pad. And uh, 
Uh, thanks to this frame cut cutback tray, we will take a static impression in its closed mouth. Because frame on the retinal part and the buccal shelf region is removed, and the easy biting handle uh, allow the patient to close to uh, take a closed mouth impression, and the uh, uh, tongue space is very important. So I firmly believe that uh, the preliminary impression using frame cutback tray is the first step to complete the uh, mandibular suction denture. I'd like to show you the uh, preliminary impression technique. So light body alternate material, alternate impression material is squatted from uh, uh, retinal pad to retinal pad and go along and go back to the starting point. If you find the space on, uh, on space, so please add the impression material on that space. And the frame cut back tray molded with heavy bodied alternate impression material is inserted into the mouth. And then press it down, be sure not to load it the tray down posteriorly, posteriorly and straight down, straight down. And ask to stick out the tongue and relax for seven seconds. After that, change your finger position and relax and pull the upper lips with, uh, with, uh, with the operator's thumb. And finally, massage. This motion prevents the building up of the impression material within the cheeks section. So this patient is very severe, so, uh, but you can see the beautiful posterior end of the retinal pad can be seen. The surface of the impression is a little bit wrinkle, but it's okay, it's a, it's a natural shape of intraorally. Why should the retinal pads be taken with a closed mouth? You have already learned the shape in its closed mouth is very different from the one in its open mouth. If you fabricate lower, lower denture in its closed mouth impression technique, no, no, according to the closed mouth, closed mouth impression technique, dentures are fabricated and inserted into the mouth. So, and a mouth, uh, tends to a uh, mouth try to open, then the uh, denture, uh, denture base uh, covering on the retinal pad region control the deformation of the retinal pad deformation of the retinal pad region. Because uh, there are two reasons, the posterior end, distal end of the retinal pad is not fibrous tissue; it's a flabby tissue, and also. There are, there are many, uh, many muscles attached around the retinal pad, but there are, there are, there are uh, no muscle attached there directly. No muscle attached to, to retinal pad region directly. So this is the reason uh, full coverage or almost coverage of the data base control the deformation of the retinal pad region. And if you fabricate the uh, lower denture, According to the open the mouth technique, do you remember compound impression material? Mask, please open your mouth and operate oh, through the cheek. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and this, uh, uh, uh. yeah. How how much of the uh, compound impression material should be softened, and how um, strongly should the operator pull the buccal mucosa or cheek mucosa, buccal mucosa or lip mucosa? So it's very difficult. It's technical sensitive, I think. So when I was young, I tried to. Um, in, take impression using compound technique several times, but um, it's very, it was very difficult for me, yeah. So I changed my mindset uh, to, uh, from uh, uh, op operator manipulated impression technique to patient-centered impression technique. So uh, dentures are fabricated according to the conventional type and they inserted into the mouth on your right and the mouse, is mouse, mouse has just closed, then a licking spot is created. This is a reason. So this is a reason the closed mouse impression technique is highly recommended to you. These are, uh, two, uh, these are two impressions. Left one is a, a, com a conventional impression technique with pressure loaded method. So all tissues are stretched out and open the mouse impression technique. On your right, 
So uh, suction and uh, frame cutback tray impression with least pressure loading method. The purpose of the, uh, purpose of the frame cutback tray impression technique is not to deform, not to reduce, not to minimize the deformation of the little pad region. So the little size of the little pad is very, very different. Uh, I conducted this study compared to compare uh, three different impressions of a, a bilateral free end, end, ended set of situation uh, taken with a stock tray and a frame cutback tray in regard to the distortion of impression. The first impression was taken on your left uh, using a stock tray with single alginate material. And the second impression is take, was taken uh, using a stock tray with uh, two different uh, consistency of arsenate impression material. Pink is a light bodied and the white is a heavy bodied. And the uh, next one, the third impression was taken using frame, a modified frame cutback tray with uh, two different uh, arsenate impression material. So three layer, uh, three uh, data are uh, superimposed. And this is a picture of three layers. And I take a look at the cross section at the little molar part region. Okay, cut. And uh, this is the cross section of the little molar part at the little molar part region. As you can see on your right, so one, two, first impression, second impression, uh, push the buckle mucosa fallout to the buckle. But third imp the third impression, doesn't do didn't doesn't didn't do that. So the the biggest risk factor to distort the little pad region is the presence of the frame frame. So this is the reason I developed the frame cutback tray. So let's move on to the final suck mechanism of the posterior end seal around the little mura pad. Two different types of closures, uh, cross contact closure with the interior side of the denture base and the little pad tissue, and the entire closure, uh, denture base, oh, entire closure over the denture base by the yeah, cross contact with the tongue side wall and the buccal mucosa. So uh, it's called BTC point, but the buccal mucosa covering on, buccal mucosa hanging over the little pad tissue and the tongue side wall compressed at the lingual polish surface and uh, the BTC point is, is formed. Dentures, dent, the denture is inserted into the mouth and the mouth is closing slowly, slowly, slowly. And the mouth has just closed. Then BTC point appears. Regardless of whether healthy identity people, children and uh, identity people or BTC point uh, peers. So I, I, I think uh, it's considered as a, a essential physiologic feature. I conducted the study to observe the very uh, variety of retinal pad region. So duplicated denture was uh, modified with end endoscopic camera. So now uh, the here, left one, left is the back tongue and the right is the back of mucosa. And oh, as you can see, the well-fit denture base uh, can be seen even though it's a duplicated denture because I fabricated it. <laughs> so BTC point appears on the retinal part region in its closed mouth. And the mouse is opening slowly, then BTC point dis dis disappears. So the main prayer, main ceiling of the uh, little, around the little pad region is a close contact closure. Interior, uh, interior side of the denture base comes in contact with the uh, little pad tissue. This is a main uh, suction mechanism, main so ceiling, ceiling mechanism. And uh, uh, secondary, uh, BP, BTC point, the formation of BTC point ensure the building up of negative pressure when swallowing or when, the, when, swallowing or when uh, chewing. So uh, this is my uh, study with MRI. <clears throat> 
So I want to show you uh, the coronal cross section of premolars and molars and uh, retinal fats, but uh, due to the time limitation, I go through it quickly. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, this is a retinal pad region. Okay, can you see BTC point can be seen? And this is the actual record. This part is the vaccinated muscle. And the yellow part is the uh, fatty tissue. And a red point is the BTC point. As you can see, you have already noticed that the BTC point is created with oral mucous membrane and tongue sidewall. So, do you remember what I said? What I stated before, the main player of the dental seal is oral mucus, in the oral mucous membrane, but not muscle. The main player of function is, of course, muscle. Please separate two things. Oh, sorry. So, a little part is the vaccinated muscle, and the yellow part is the fatty tissue, and a little part is the denture, and the red point our blue part is a denture, and the red point, it depicts BTC point. So I conducted this study, so to create the over, over expansion situation, the red wax is molded, excess, excess red wax is molded on the back side. Then, mouth is closed. Oh. Yeah. Mouth is closing, but, Overextension of the uh, lead wax uh, interlocked the buccal mucosa covering on the little pad region. So BTC point didn't, uh, didn't appear. This is the same, uh, same finding with MRI. So space is created on your right. So incomplete BTC point. And over, so next, uh, lead wax is molded. So it's a uh, uh, overextension, overextended uh, denture borders uh, to the sublingual lesion, sublingual lesion, yeah? And the mouse is so close, closing slowly, but this, the BTC point didn't appear because overextension of the lingual denture border affect the tongue movement. So in order to, um, in order to uh, make, uh, in, in order to create the beautiful BTC point, please draw the line between the cheek mucosa and the uh, lid mucosa. Be sure not to overdraw the line on the uh, uh, cheek mucosa. If you do that, the mandibular denture would lift up against the opening reaction of the mucosal tissue. So what's the meaning of the formation of BTC point? Even though BTC points are not formed, please check if the back of shape denture border is overexpanded, or so uh, the lingual denture border is overextended, or uh, tooth position is correct or not. Tooth position is usually, uh, tooth are aligned, uh, usually in the middle of the width, uh, rich width. And of course, pound line is very effective. Pound line is, uh, is very effective. So uh, to create the BTC point, uh, denture border, so this is a custom tray, a custom tray, and the denture border uh, becomes very thin, and uh, it, uh, you know, the denture border uh, just to denture border, sorry, tired. <laughs> sorry, water. So, uh, denture border on the little part region should be covered thinly and uh, avoid the sinew string. Uh, what is the sinew string? I will talk about the sinew string after that. And uh, back, uh, back our shell, uh, the concavity should be given to the back of shelf region and uh, um, um, concavity uh, is created in the uh, tongue area. And finally, uh, full coverage of the retinal pad region, the region of the, with the denture base. It's very important. So please keep in mind. Okay. 
So what is sinistering? Sinistering is located at the back and base of retinal molar pad region. Uh, it's a small frenum, but please uh, avoid uh, frenum, avoid sinistering, regardless of whether it's visible or invisible. So appearance rate of sinistering is only 13%, but when the operator pull the buccal mucosa outward, uh, the uh, appearance rate is going up to 40%. So uh, measuring experiment to pull the suction denture base is, conduct, is uh, conducted to study how much of the little pad should be covered with a denture base in order to obtain, get, obtain uh, good suction action. So the denture base, suction denture base is created first. And the operator pull the suction denture base by the data force and the denture border uh, is trimmed. Uh, denture border is trimmed off uh, posterior uh, to third, middle, and front. This is the outcome of this uh, experiment. So, in order to uh, get enough suction, so you uh, through two, two to three. Um, more than two, to, more two to three of the retinal pad should be covered. But uh, uh, in my training course or seminar, uh, I always uh, teach course participants, uh, full coverage is much better because uh, uh, it's easy to trim off uh, when delivering the dent, delivering lower dentures. Okay. Okay. This is the principle of the suction dentures. So thank you so much today. And uh, uh, due to the time limitation, I cannot talk, uh, talk about the uh, suction mechanism very well, but uh, uh, I hope you would have found, you found my presentation to be informative and impressive. So, so next time, I'd like to highlight intraoral examination and I will show you how to fabricate well-fit custom tray with seven ideas. So thank you for attention. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Abia, for a fantastic presentation. Um, brilliant to see you going through it all. Uh, the master at work. You're a great inspiration to so many people around the world and the response has been amazing. There's been so many people watching you present today. So thank you very, very much for this excellent presentation. I can't wait for the next one, which as you say, is on, th on the 30th, um, which is this Thursday at the same time. So I think everybody will be very excited about what you will show them then. And I look forward mm. to that. And I know it's late over there, so, mm. I'll uh, say so thank you very much, and um, we shall see you on Thursday. Yeah, thank you. So I, I, I want to give you, uh, audience members, uh, one comment. Yes. So once you fabricate well-fit custom trays, so based on the frame cutback tray in preliminary impression, you will get suction action. Yes. I hope. Yeah, I firmly believe that. <laughs> as, long as, uh, as long as you follow what you mm -hmm. have taught and the correct people are teaching it, you will be successful because I follow what you teach as do many, many others and we are all successful and it's all because we follow how you teach it perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. It's my pleasure, my honour. So we shall say goodbye and we shall see everyone on Thursday. Yeah, sure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, have a nice day.